Yeah, I'm thinking this might be my last match. Somebody say last match. Hi, welcome to Bell to Bell, the show where we pounce on a wrestler's final match faster than you can say, oh wait, they returned. So with the news that MVP has wrestled for the last time in WWE, and because of all your guys' comments, it's time we take a look at Montel Fontavious Porter. So the road that led MVP to the WWE is a pretty interesting and unusual one. Born in Miami, Montel Fontavious Porter grew up in a section of the city called Upalaka. The area was a rough place for anybody to live, much less a child, due to its high murder rate. Being raised in an environment like that led MVP to joining a gang before he was even a teenager. Things kept getting worse and worse until he committed a robbery and ended up being sentenced to prison at the age of 16. MVP spent the next nine and a half years behind bars, but during that time, he met a corrections officer who was also a wrestler named Primetime Daryl D. Once MVP was out of prison, this connection gave him the opportunity to attend wrestling school. After training, MVP debuted in 2002 and wrestled his first wrestling match at a flea market in his street clothes. Though he would start from humble beginnings, MVP's career quickly rose, performing for bigger and bigger companies until getting signed by WWE in 2005. After spending about a year in development, Montel Vontavious Porter would make his first on-screen appearance on the August 4, 2006 episode of SmackDown. He debuted as a free agent that GM Teddy Long was looking to sign. While in negotiations, MVP was seen as an egotistical athlete, bragging about how good he was and constantly on his phone. Finally, in late September, Mr. 305 was signed and his first match was scheduled for No Mercy. So let's head over there. Partway through the pay-per-view, the debuting wrestler's music hit and an inflatable tunnel was set up on stage. Through the fog came out a cocky looking Montel Vontavious Porter and after some pyro, the franchise playa got on the mic. He stated he was going to dominate the pay-per-view and declared himself the greatest athlete ever. Next came out MVP's surprise opponent, Marty Garner, who you may know as the man who had his neck injured during a match with Triple H in 1996. When both men were in the ring, MVP slapped Garner across the face before the match had even begun. SmackDown's newest signee was all smiles and focused mostly on showing off than actually trying to beat his opponent. This backfired a bit when MVP shoved Marty Garner into the turnbuckles and absorbed a few of the jobber's punches. This resulted in MVP turning up the intensity and began showcasing his arsenal at his opponent's expense. Garner gave it his best, but it was no match for MVP. The fight came to a close with a playmaker and a three count. It was a very basic debut match, but I think it did a good job of getting MVP's cockiness over and it didn't overstay its welcome. Plus, those Power Rangers chants were awesome. On the SmackDown after No Mercy, MVP began his first feud in WWE with Kane. He did manage to beat the Big Red Machine in several of their encounters, but walked away in defeat at Armageddon in December. Once 2007 rolled around, MVP began a new rivalry with the United States Champion, Chris Benoit. They feuded all the way to WrestleMania 23, which saw the challenger come up short. MVP would still ultimately end the feud as the winner when he beat Benoit at Judgment Day to win the US title and his first championship in WWE. After about two months of getting comfortable with the belt, MVP began his most iconic rivalry with Matt Hardy. The ball and superstar started bragging that he was better than Matt at everything, and this led them to competing in all kinds of contests, from pizza to chest. In an ironic twist, the rivals became tag team champions after Teddy Long put them together in a championship match, which they won. Even though they were now a team, the two continued to compete against each other. Despite signs that MVP was becoming more friendly towards Matt Hardy, their tag team imploded in November. After losing the belts to The Miz and John Morrison, MVP immediately invoked the rematch, which they also lost. Afterwards, the United States Champion attacked Hardy's injured knee, which caused MVP's former tag team partner to be taken off TV. For the next several months, MVP's career remained steady, with some brief feuds with Rey Mysterio and Ric Flair. Things picked back up at WrestleMania 24 during the Money in the Bank ladder match. While the other participants were down, MVP seized the opportunity and it looked like he was about to win the briefcase. Just then, Matt Hardy returned and prevented Montel Vontavious Porter from becoming Mr. Money in the Bank. This finally set up a rematch between both men for the US title at Backlash, where MVP's championship reign came to an end at 300-430 days. After this, Mr. 305's career started to go downhill. He began a losing streak that continued through the rest of the year. Once 2009 arrived, things turned around when he defeated the Big Show in January. This also caused him to turn face for the first time in WWE. About two months later, he challenged and defeated Shelton Benjamin to regain the United States Championship and began his second run with the title. More change would follow in April when he was drafted to Raw on top of being the first draft pick of the night. About two months into being on the red brand, MVP would lose his US Championship to Kofi Kingston and fail to win it back. 
he'd move on to pursuing the tag team titles again, this time with Mark Henry as his partner. They defeated the champions, Jericho, on an episode of Raw in a non-title match. This led them to challenging for the belts at breaking point, but came up short. When 2010 came around, MVP looked to become US Champion again and faced off against the current title holder, The Miz, at the Royal Rumble. Unfortunately for the franchise player, he lost the match, and on top of that, the A-lister attacked him later in the night. At Elimination Chamber, MVP got a second shot at the championship, but once again walked out without the gold. After about a year on Raw, MVP was drafted back to SmackDown. Things started off promising, with him beginning an undefeated streak, but continued losses put that to an end. In November, he would win a number one contenders match for the Intercontinental title, but failed to win the championship bout. Finally, after roughly four and a half years in the company, MVP's time with WWE came to an end on December 2nd, 2010. His final match before leaving aired a day later on December 3rd, where he teamed up with Caval in a losing effort against Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre. With WWE behind him, MVP packed his bags and flew over to New Japan, where he would wrestle for about two years. Throughout the 2010s, MVP performed in a number of promotions, including Impact Wrestling, Ring of Honor, MLW, and more. During this time, MVP didn't make any appearances in WWE, and it stayed that way for about seven years. That changed, though, during the 25th anniversary of Raw, when he showed up backstage playing poker with the APA and several other wrestlers and legends. It was alright, but what we got two years later was even better. At the 2020 Royal Rumble, Brock Lesnar was firmly in control as he waited for the next participant to come out. After the buzzer, an entrance theme that hadn't been played in over 8 years echoed throughout the stadium, and it belonged to the 12th entrant, MVP. Once he arrived ringside, MVP gave Paul Heyman a little chase until Brock Lesnar intervened. The franchise player gave it his best, but was eliminated in quick fashion by the Beast. Luckily, this wasn't how MVP's career was going to end, as he showed up the next night for his final match in WWE. After Rey Mysterio made his entrance, we saw a few highlights from Montel Fontavious Porter's WWE career. Afterwards, the theme song started playing, the lights changed, and MVP appeared on stage. Dressed in a black and red Punisher attire, the former two-time United States Champion entered the ring and got set to fight. The match started with both MVP and Rey trying to outpace the other, and like in his debut match, MVP had some fun with his opponent. Mysterio's agility was an issue, but the man from the 305 took care of that with a single big boot. Now with Rey Mysterio down, MVP kept it that way by laying into him with strikes and kicks. However, MVP may have given Ray too much time to recover, as a dropped toehold slammed the franchise playa into a turnbuckle. MVP went to the outside to recover, but the masked wrestler wasn't letting him away that easily. Once he returned from a commercial break, MVP was back in control, but Mysterio still had fight left in him. MVP tried his best to overpower Ray, but the master of the 619 kept countering every attempt. The ball and superstar wasn't going down easily though, as he kicked out from a springboard moonsault. Then, after knocking Mysterio down, MVP ran the ropes and hit his signature ball and elbow, but it only gave him a two count. Like before, MVP slowed the match down, which ended up costing him. Rey Mysterio used a fast hurricanrana to set MVP in the ropes and hit the 619 and the splash for the win. The match itself was okay, but I think we all just really wanted to see MVP doing his entrance and hitting his signature moves, and we got that. I would have liked to see the playmaker in there, but nonetheless, it was just awesome seeing MVP wrestle one final time in WWE. Two days later, MVP announced that this was his last match for the company. He also mentioned that he's not done with wrestling yet, but his career is getting close to retirement. The story of MVP is something straight out of a movie. His life had a rough start when he got involved in criminal activity and wound up in prison. But during his sentence, he met someone who gave him the opportunity to become a wrestler, and after serving his time, that's what he did. Four years after lacing up his boots, he was in WWE and wrestling against the industry's biggest names. Sure, he never became a world champion, but I'd say his career was filled with success. I know he's done wrestling in WWE, but I'd still love to see him make a few appearances from time to time. So how about you guys? Post a comment with what your favorite MVP memory or moment is, then check out the video in the middle to see Luke Harper's first and last matches in WWE. I hear he's headed to AEW soon. Until next time, I'm Zach from Tap Out Corner, and that was Bell to Bell.